This over here is a brand new cooler from Deepcool and this is supposed to be the Noctua killer. This is the Assassin 4 from Deepcool and I'm gonna see if it can beat the infamous Noctua NHU-12A. And you're wondering why don't you test it against the NHT-15 which is, you know, dual tower like this one is and, you know, performs better. In my testing, I've tested two NHT-15s and the NHU-12A is actually better on the 12th or 13th gen CPUs than the NHD 15. I've got the NHU 12A here and I've done the testing already on this one, on this beautiful Noctua PC. If you haven't seen that build, go check it out. But now let's swap out this cooler to this one. Let's see what the installation is like and how it performs. Looking for a cheap way to license your windows? Check out WhoKeys through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get a 30% off. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10, but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get a 30% off. Check out WhoKeys.com in the video description below. Here is our accessories box. What you're gonna get is also this long screwdriver with a little Allen key on that end as well. There's a grease cleanser and a spreader as well. That is very good news. That's quite an interesting thing actually. So this uh, fan adapter that comes with it, you can put this fan adapter in the back of this here and then you're gonna get even more performance out of this cooler. So you can add an extra fan on the back there to get more performance. We'll try that one out as well. Obviously now we're gonna have to find the LGA 1700 mounting kit because the CPU that I have here is a 13700K. That's the easy bottom. You just click them all the way to the end and now it's 1700 or 1200. Another interesting thing about this cooler is that it's got a little switch in here and there's like two squares and then four squares. When it's on two squares, it's on a quiet mode and when it's on the four squares, it's on the performance mode. So I guess there's like a little fan control on it as well that uh, controls the PWM there. So the top grill of the cooler comes off as well. And then I think if we push these in on the side and then the fan slowly comes out, you can take it off this little um, Y splitter there. And this is a 140 millimeter fan actually in there. And as you can see, the blades are quite aggressive, very small in there and then very big and wide on the ends there. What else you can see here is it's got a dual tower. As you can see, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven heat pipes that run on this nickel plated. I think it's copper and then nickel plated, I believe on the top. And then they run into these two towers, one in the back and then one in the front here. Okay, here's the thing. I actually installed the Deepcool Assassin 4 wrong way. I installed it uh, backwards so that the fan is actually on the wrong side. But I was talking to Deepcool and you can actually mount this cooler both ways or it shouldn't affect the thermals. And I did try it the other way as well off the camera. But just so you know that what you're seeing right here is actually wrong way. But the right way is to have no fan in the front and the fan in the back in a pull-pull configuration. So the fan will go on this way. So if this clips on the back of that. So that little arrow on this back bracket will show the upper part. So that will go up upside. It doesn't go this way because it, it just won't fit in. So it's going to go that way. So I'll just make sure that I'll install it the right way. So that's going to be the back. Okay, these fan screws there have come with this interesting like a uh, Torx head. I'm not sure why they've made them so special. I'm just gonna use some of my own fan screws. So the deep cool back racket goes on. You need such small fingers to put these coolers on. Putting these like standoffs for the bracket that goes on the like back bracket. I've got quite small fingers. If you've got big fingers, goodness me. It's nothing to do with the cooler. It's just like the motherboard as well. It's got all the VRMs and MOSFETs so close to this. I wish there was like a screw though that you could use like a screwdriver so you don't have to put your fingers that in there, but these are only finger tightened. Let's check out this grease cleaner. Okay, we'll open this up and then you've got this little alcohol lap. Yeah. Don't sniff it. Oh, that works very well. 
Unfortunately, it is a one-time use. Now time for thermal paste. I'll use the spatula to, to spread it around. The thermal paste is very liquidy and not so hard, which means that it will spread nicely between all the little cavities or cavities between the cooler and the CPU. Make sure you do take this off. Alrighty. Let's take a look then. How does this one handle the 13700K? As you can see, it's already down clocking itself to 3.8 gigahertz and five gigahertz. Hmm. Okay, that's a while later now, and I've tested not one, but actually two Assassin 4 coolers from Deepcool now, because the one that was sent to me at first was a pre-production unit, and I think I had a few issues there because it seemed to have be running a little bit hotter than normal. So they sent me the production version and then that runs a little bit better. A few things I've noticed now when using these quite a bit off the camera and trying to test it and running them 30 minutes and so on. It's very important which thermal paste you use there. I got a little bit different results with Arctic MX-5 and then the deep cool included paste because the deep cool included paste actually is a bit more liquidy and it, it goes very nicely spread on the cooler and CPU, which means that they've designed that paste with this cooler so that works better with, with that as well. So I'm getting a bit better results with the included thermal paste. And just to show you what's going on here, if you do a single test on Cinebench, I'm gonna run here and go zero. And here we can see what's going on. So I don't have any extra fans there. As you can see, not thermal throttling, and now it's thermal throttling. About halfway through the uh, single run, we start thermal throttling, and it is 27.9 degrees in this room right now, which is quite warm. 29,567 points. The results are good, but it does thermal throttle because the 253 watts that we're trying to push through here aren't quite happening at this room temperature. Now, the Noctua, when I was testing Noctua, I was actually uh, testing it a few degrees cooler in the room here and we're going to see the results in a moment there because every single degree that you can keep the CPU cooler when you're running multi-threaded workloads then your CPU can push higher clock speeds if it keeps it cooler so that's how the recent CPUs work now that they're absolutely maxing out the thermal kind of limit that the CPU has and then runs it as close there as possible when it can to get the maximum boost clocks out. Now you've already noticed that I actually mounted the cooler wrong way around at first because most of the coolers on the market are in a you know push and pull kind of configuration that you've got a fan in the front that pushes through and then the middle fan is going to pull it through but actually this cooler has been designed in a pull pull configuration so the front is actually this bit here and that's what you're going to be seeing this nice bit as you can see well you kind of can't see in there and then it pulls the middle fan here that's in the middle this pulls it through that way that is a much larger fan as well as you can see this fan goes all the way to the bottom there and then gets like 140 millimeters make sure it is the right way so the air goes that way as you can see it pulls it in from here and then goes in there and then the back fan here actually pulls the air through as well so it's a pull and pull fan configuration and the back fan is smaller it's only 120 millimeters this little switch there that controls the fan speed full speed and the small speed also controls the little um, light on the Stoop Deepcool logo. As you can see, as I flick it, the light comes on and off. And then I also tested the cooler with the Noctua fan in the front, where um, you get this bracket with the cooler if you wanted to, to add, 
attach any 120 millimeter fan to the cooler and then you can literally pop it in there just like that and then you've got an extra fan in the front pushing this way then push pull pull configuration as you can see so this is one of the best fan configs there that i had there as well a bit of a blasphemy for deep cool for having it uh you know a nocto fan in there i do want to say that the fan bracket is a little bit fiddly as you can see sometimes it, it stays loose and doesn't quite clip in perfectly against it but it does work as you can see right now look at that it's gone on an angle a little bit but it does stick there so look at the results the nocto nhu 12a versus this here on the left side we have the Noctua and this is 30 minutes in a bench that we got the score here the higher the score the better the cooling basically and as you can see Noctua actually managed to keep one of the highest scores in fact that Noctua NSU 12a is the best cooler I have tested for the 13th gen I highly recommend you check out other reviews as well but in my conditions whatever we've tested the NHU 12a from Noctua is just performing the best best air cooler that you, you can get really and this one is a little bit bigger even than the Noctua about five six hundred points more which means that the Noctua is two percent better and this is two percent slower but the Noctua ambient temperature was actually two degrees cooler the Noctua was 25 degrees where this one was 27.5 degrees which means that actually this one keeps up with the Noctua very very well now if we're looking at the clock speeds during this test we can see that the average clock speed here on uh, the deep cool was 46.61 and on Nocto was 47.21 so about 60 megahertz higher clock speeds on Nocto but again Nocto had much cooler temperature which means that the whole environment was actually cooler for the CPU to run I don't have a lab here to control the ambient temperature but then what if we put the Nocto fan in the front did that make a difference first of all our score got a little bit higher the ambient temperature is still about two degrees warmer 27.2 degrees as you can see Noctua is still about 300 400 points higher which is about 1 to 1.5 percent higher score but the clock speeds when we're looking at these now are interestingly even lower than previously 4652 not 46 six one that we had on the previous one so basically what we're saying is that yes in theory you can get even more cooling out of it if you add like a very good fan in the front there but the cooler is already doing good enough of a job in fact very good job that adding that in the front doesn't make that much of a difference what I'm seeing here yes yeah, slightly faster clock speeds but in terms of overall CPU performance not a lot different now if you're looking at the maximum boost clocks you can see Nocto is 5.3 and the deep cool is 5.4 that is because I was about two seconds late at pressing zero on the hardware info which meant that the all cores are already boosting three gigahertz and then but on the deep cool one I was faster which means I zeroed it before so it was hitting 5.4 a little bit there and then the next half a second it's down to 5.3 so that's why we recorded 5.4 here as well on two of this cause uh, and then what, that's why you can't see that on Noctua so then in conclusion is this a Noctua killer I would say not a killer but a competitor it's definitely performing right up there with the highest and coolers that we get from Noctua NHU 12a or NHD 15 I'd say just in there but it comes at a lower price point now the design is something that I really like here as well deep cool is going with a little bit more minimalistic and more modern uh, just a boxy design which I like quite a lot and and to not see a heat sink here and as you can see you get pretty much 100% RAM clearance because you don't have a fan in the front but you have it in the middle and in the back which means that you can install any pretty much any RAM sticks that you can but still have to double check it because 
Even mine, I think, depending how tall they are, they might be still hitting the cooler. But the design is very, very nice. And I, in some ways, I kind of like it more than the Nocto one because the Nocto one, you really see the fans. But in here, you don't see the fans. You see the heatsink, which is pretty, pretty cool. Makes it look a bit like, you know, passive heatsink, even though the fan is in the back there. I do like this little accent logo with the light there. Interestingly, you can't actually turn it off. It does dim down, but it's still actually on than here. See, this is off in here when it looks like off there. So if you're looking for a high-end air cooler that is much cheaper than the Nocto one, I think this is a good option. If you do want to purchase it, check out the latest pricing in the description below. As always, I'd love to know what you think about this cooler in the comment section below. And if you're a creator and you want to build the best bank for what creator PC, then check out the build guides in the video description below. If you don't want to waste any money on PCs and getting parts that actually don't give you performance, those video guides are for you. There's four videos, whatever budget you have, there's one for you. And even within the budget or in the video, Video, I'm explaining upgrades and downgrades everything that you need to know go check them out and as always I'd love to know what you think about this cooler and I'll see you in the comment section below bye bye